And then of course, uh, poor Tina, because she has a leg injury, she gets a little bit nervous walking around other animals. And I don't blame her. She is too skittish to get up into the mix. She's very skittish. She doesn't want to get caught up in all this riffraff. And we don't blame her for that. So Santoro has finished his grains. And now he wants more. He's trying to take Waylon's. Waylon's like, I don't have hardly anything over here neither. You're wasting your time. So now he's just going to be mad and pout about it. But guys, I promise you, these babies are eating twice a day. And so Waylon, Santoro, they're fine. He's going to be mean to me now. Uh, I'm not going to take them. In. Hey, I don't take that. I fight back. So what you can't do, I hate to be mean, but you can never make them think that they can have control over you. If they ever have control over you, you're really asking for trouble. I'll go ahead and talk about something that we've talked about a few times before, that we don't touch our bulls. We'll touch and love on our females plenty, but we do not put our hands on our bulls. And, uh, and that's why right there, you never want your bull to think he can walk up to you and push you around. So for the most part, they will find their own kind of food. They all have a different mixture, a different formula. And so even though the horses may nibble on the bird seed or the cows may nibble on the horse uh, grains or, or vice versa, they're not gonna stick to it. If their own kind is here, they're gonna go find their own kind. Let me turn my camera around and walk amongst them. This is really just kind of majestic and also a little bit maybe death defying. I mean, no one has any food aggressions out here. There's plenty of piles for everybody. They all have plenty to eat. I've tried to put everything on the grass the best I could, keep it out of the dirt. But uh, we're just so darn blessed. They all get along so well. And uh, Waylon, you just walked right past your grains. <sighs> You just walked right past your grains right there. He has a big head. He's going to be a big bull. Waylon over here. Suck, 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 suck. Waylon, suck, 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 suck. Oh, Lord. He's just going to chase that bird out of here because he can do that. Uh, the thing is, he was not looking down. Here's a big old pile of his grains right here. Waylon, that's an ant. Waylon, look right here. Right there is your food. Now eat it. <laughs> Sometimes they get a little bit goofy. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I said this before, if I had the option 
to divide them up, you know, put the birds way over there, and then maybe the cows over here, and then the horses over here. I would do that. But it doesn't work that way. You come out in the afternoons with your, well, we use the side-by-side -side full of the different grains, and they all just come running. And so what you do is kind of divvy it all up, and they will. They'll all go find their pile. And so they're all going to get a belly full. The problem is um, sometimes the more dominant animals, like the horses, for example, if they finish too fast, they'll end up running everyone else off their food. And that creates an entire shifting. Everyone will have to shift. And then, of course, uh, poor Tina, because she has a leg injury, she gets a little bit nervous walking around other animals. And I don't blame her. She is too skittish to get up into the mix. She's very skittish. She doesn't want to get caught up in all this riffraff. And we don't blame her for that. So Santoro has finished his grains. And now he wants more. He's trying to take Waylon's. Waylon's like, I don't have hardly anything over here neither. You're wasting your time. So now he's just going to be mad and pout about it. But, guys, I promise you, these babies are eating twice a day. And so, Waylon, Santoro, they're fine. He's going to be mean to me now. Uh, I'm not going to take them in. Nate, I don't take that. I fight back. So, what you can't do, I hate to be mean, but you can never make them think that they can have control over you. If they ever have control over you, you're really asking for trouble. I'll go ahead and talk about something that we've talked about a few times before, that we don't touch our bulls. We'll touch and love on our females plenty, but we do not put our hands on our bulls. And uh, and that's why right there, you never want your bull to think he can walk up to you and push you around. That puts yourself in a very dangerous situation. <laughs> They're called our guardian dogs. They hear that dog across the street barking. But no, I think that you all saw right there, uh, Santoro was like... Uh, you know what? I'm still hungry, and I want more food. And he has food right there. But he thought he'd come over here and kind of harass me a little bit. And so you always have to let them know that no matter how big they are, you're a little bit bigger. And so you can do that many different ways. You can make yourself look bigger, raising your hands up or maybe getting you a spanky stick. Or you can always raise your voice. You can amplify your voice. Uh, to a level they're not used to hearing it. And that was all it took today. And that still keeps you with an edge. And you have to keep that edge. I'm not trying to uh, be you know, do a tutorial, a uh, how-to video. But I, I don't mind. If there's things that, I, that I've learned from experience over the course of, you know, the years... And uh, I can share that knowledge with you to maybe make your life a little bit easier. If you ever find yourself in a situation with a little bull or even a bigger bull, Tex knows he and I have a respect for each other. We have a mutual respect. I don't get close to him. And he didn't get close to me. We just kind of have a mutual respect. And so what you saw Santoro do, you would have never seen Tex do. At the same time, I don't walk up and try to love on them and try to put my hands on them and try to do all that kind of stuff. It's getting dark. I'm going to go ahead and roll, roll on out of here. But thank you all for watching this little short video. I do have a couple more mouths to feed up on the high hill. We got uh, the goats, our calves, which Jamie will take care of them. But I also have Carl and Tat, our big birds, our male birds. So we'll work our way over there right now. And uh, for anyone who's concerned about Tina and now, of course, Charlie, and you think they don't have enough food, they actually walked away from their food, y'all. They walked away from their food, so they're fine. We do have grass growing across our pastures now. Not a lot, but there's a little bit. They have stuff to forage on, stuff to graze on. And like I said, we feed them twice a day. Tina's already laid down there for the night. See her? So, everything's good here. Don't let
Let your troubles fester Come watch Longhorn Lester <laughs> Yeah, something like that